Hey there, my name is Kellef. I've been a furry artist on and off for about 10 years now, and recently I've been going from 2D art to 3D art, and some people wanted to know how I did that. So in this video, I'm gonna walk through how you can take a sketch like this and turn it into a 3D model like this one. So let's get started. First thing you need is an orthographic drawing, just a pure profile and a pure straight on. Uh, I recommend that you keep some guidelines to keep your proportions consistent between your two drawings. Uh, don't feel bad if you're not the best at drawing either profiles or straight on views. They're going to act more like a starting point than rules we have to stick to. In the description, I attached all the different orthographic views that I've drawn so far if you just want to use some of my art and jump right into the 3D stuff. Let's load up Blender. Uh, the first thing you need to do is bring in your reference file twice. Hit Shift A, go down to Image and Reference. Hit N to open up the sidebar if it's not open already. Move to the Item tab and then hit Backspace over the rotation to reset its position. Hit R, X, and then 90 to flip the image appropriately and then place wherever you want using G. Try to line this up as best you can with your front view drawing by placing the center of the face directly on that blue line, the Z axis. You can go to the menu on the right, click Object Data Properties, that's the one that looks like a photo. Uh, check the Use Alpha box and then lower the opacity. You can use that to help line up your drawing and then raise the opacity again. Select the reference you imported, hit Shift D to duplicate it, hit Backspace over its position in the item sidebar to reset it, hit R, Z, and then 90 to rotate it and then move it into position along the axis. I don't have any hard and fast rules for placing the side view, uh, just take a guess at the moment and we'll fiddle with this position later. We want to keep space for our 3D furry model in the center, and the reference is a small space away from it so there's no intersection. Let's go ahead and do some nice things for our future selves. Name each of the references that you imported front view and side view. Select both of them, hit M, and put them into a collection named References. In object mode, hit Shift A again, go to Empty, add a plane axis, name it Mirror Object, and put it in its own collection named Controllers for later. Hit Shift A again. Let's add a mesh a cube this time. Tab to go into edit mode. Hit A to make sure everything is selected if it's not. Right click, hit subdivide, and on the window that came up in the lower left, change the number of cuts to be five. Hit one on the numpad to look straight on, Alt Z to see through it, and then select the left half of the vertices with a box select and delete them. We're gonna go to the wrench submenu on the right, add a mirror modifier, and make sure that we have clipping on, otherwise this won't work, and add a subdivision surface modifier with default settings. Hit A to make sure it's all selected again, right click, smooth vertices, and set repeat to 40. This step can be a little finicky, so if it doesn't look just like mine, uh, follow from the cube creation onwards with the same exact steps. Make sure to hit this button on your modifiers. It looks like a triangle pointing down. This is called on cage. When you're in edit mode, this will allow you to pretend as if your modifiers are applied, which I think is helpful when you're working. The main goal here now is to use numpad one and three to switch between the orthographic views as you move and scale the subdivided cube to get the general shape of the skull that you're going for. This is a good time to make sure that your side reference is in a good position. Once you're happy with the general position of the skull, select where you think the base of the muzzle is for your OC and extrude it out by hitting E and pulling. Don't worry about the chin at the moment, we'll get to that next. Line at the tip of the snout to match from the side view, scale appropriately, and add some loop cuts to the snout using Control R and the mouse wheel. Make sure to click my favorite button in Blender, the proportional editing button up here. Use your mouse wheel uh, to increase or decrease your circle of influence, and you can move a lot of things at once. This lets your actions feel more natural, so using proportional editing, scale, and rotation, you can bully the snout into position. Select some faces on the bottom of the snout to extrude the chin out from the mesh. Scale it down a little bit and add a few loop cuts here as well. Follow the same steps as we did with the snout to bully this into a nice position. You're probably going to get a good laugh <laughs> at how this is going to look from the front view. And it's a good bit of discouraging fun how 3D models are probably going to look bad for about 60 to 70% of the process, but don't worry, we'll fix it up. Select the sides of the muzzle with proportional editing on and tug it in on the x-axis. Let's not worry about topology at all at this stage. All that matters is that we can get it to look good. We'll worry about topology later. 
feel free to enter sculpting mode by using that little drop down menu that says either object mode or edit mode, and then use the default draw tool and smooth tool by holding shift and clicking to fix any pinching in the mesh that you find. Next is going to be the neck, so we're going to follow the same idea like we just did. We're going to select, extrude, scale, loop cut, and then shape. If your character has any horns or sharp bits, we're going to just ignore those for now and then move on to the ears or any more organic shapes they may have. Follow the same approach as we did for the snout uh, and the chin and select some faces at the base of the ear, extrude, and then scale inwards. Before you add any loop cuts, make sure to check both the front and side views to line up the general placement of the tips of the ears, otherwise it's going to be a lot more more difficult to place. If your character, like mine, has an ear with both an inside part and an outside part, uh, don't worry about figuring that out yet, just get a nice general shape that looks good for most angles. So let's take a moment to think about the mouth. Uh, as there is no paw in a head sculpt, the maw is the next most important part. You shift right click to place a 3D cursor near the start of the lips, and then you shift A to add another cube. Scale on the Y axis to get it a lot skinnier, and then scale it down in general. Look from the front view and make sure that it's wider than the head by scaling on the X axis. Go into edit mode with tab, hit three to go to face select, and then select this inner part right here. Looking from the side view, we're gonna extrude, rotate, and then place this elongated cube along the shape of the mouth. We're gonna be using this later. All right, now into my favorite part, which is sculpting. You'll need to go to the wrench menu on the right and make sure to apply any modifiers you have to your model, which for me was the mirror and the subdivision surface modifier. We're gonna be working with dynamic topology, which does not play nicely with modifiers. So once these are applied, let's switch over to sculpt mode and use one of the sexiest buttons in Blender, the Dyn Topo button. Ignore that warning and open up the settings. Defaultly, this will be set to relative detail, which if you enjoy, then that's awesome, but I personally prefer constant detail. Relative detail means that the amount of detail you add to your model is directly related to your zoom level, how close or far you are away from it. Constant detail means that no matter what your zoom level is, whatever detail level that is set within the tool is what it's always going to be. I prefer this because it allows us to keep a workflow that goes from less detail to more detail. Uh, I usually start somewhere between like 20 to 30 and then make the number higher as I see fit. Now the sculpting step is 100% something you can spend as little or as much time on as you want. This is where you get to express yourself and have fun finding the character. Using Alt-Z to see through the model, we can keep switching between the front and the side view and use those sketches we did as a nice guideline to figure out how the character is going to look in 3D space. I've linked a video in the description by Grant Abbott. It's the only video I've watched on sculpting, and he walks through every single tool and gives some good advice about things too. In general, I use the draw and clay strips tool to add volume to the model, shift click to smooth, and then other tools as necessary to create definition where I need while I sculpt. Both the grab tool and especially the elastic deform tool are godsends when it comes to moving your model and keeping all that work intact. F is a nice shortcut for increasing or decreasing the size of your brush, shift F for changing the intensity of your brush, and whenever you shift click to smooth, do remember that it does not use the intensity of your current tool, it uses the intensity set on the smooth tool itself, which is one of the red ones on the left. Take as long or as little as you like on this step. Uh, feel free to look at the long form video that I uploaded if you want to see how I approach something with different shapes of the head or handle different aspects of modeling that might not make sense to you at the moment, like ears or jaw or neck or nose. It's all about just playing with the tools and learning what works for what situation. Okay, so back to the topic of horns. Shift right click where you think the base of the horns will intersect with the head. Shift A to add a cylinder. We're going to scale this down and try and find a good angle for where it's going to come out of the head. Once the base feels fine, a tab to enter edit mode, three for face select, and then click the top of the cylinder, E to extrude for the tip of the horn, and then scale it down. Move between the front and side view to find a good in-between with your art for a length of the horn. Use control R to add some loop cuts to the cylinder and kind of feel out the shape from there. On my character, I drew those three little side horns, all of which follow the same general creation method for the main horn. Shift right click for 3D cursor placement, shift A to add a cylinder, rotate, extrude, scale, place, loop cuts, and tweak. Hey, remember that mirror object I asked you to make forever ago? Well, go ahead and apply a mirror modifier to the horns you've been making, and go to the mirror object and select a mirror object. I probably should have told you to name it something different, but anyway, this will mirror the horns to the other side of the head, and we won't have to worry about applying transforms or scale to do this. This is how the horns ended up looking after some tweaking. After creating that first tiny horn, I ended up using Shift D to duplicate them, and then scaled and rotated the other two for placement. Uh, go ahead and add a mirror modifier to these horns too. 
So something I forgot to talk about at all until now is matte caps. Uh, if you click this little drop down arrow over here, it'll open the viewport shading options. Also note is what we can see while we're working. Uh, click matte cap here and just have fun playing around with the different options. This pink and cyan vibe is always my favorite one. You know how I said earlier that we didn't care at all about the current topology? Well, this next step is why. I learned this and a lot of other things by watching Moop to Your Stream, their avatar creation. Uh, I have a link down in the description to an add-on called Quad Remesh, and when you download it, don't extract it. We actually need the zip file. Go to Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, hit the Install button and find that zip file you downloaded. Once that's installed, select your mesh, and to open up the side panel, go to Quad Remesh. Make sure to hit this X symmetry near the bottom, and then set your quad count to be somewhere between like four to 5,000. And then hit the top Remesh It button. The percentage completion will be shown at the bottom as a progress bar. Once this is completed, your old mesh will be hidden and a new one will be created. What this tool did was it took all that complicated information we created with dynamic sculpting and simplified it into quads, which we love. Right-click your model and hit Shade Smooth, and it'll basically feel identical to your old sculpt, but with a lot less information attached. It's time to revisit the mouth. Uh, click your mesh and apply a Boolean modifier and select the mouth you made earlier from that elongated cube. Uh, make sure you select difference as the operation and I usually just lower the overlap threshold to zero. Also go ahead and just apply that modifier. I'll explain why in a second. The next big step that we're gonna undertake is a manual retopology for the lips. Uh, something we really care about when it comes to the lips is an edge loop. And if you try in edit mode on edge select and alt click these lips we just created, uh, you're not gonna get a perfect ring going all around the lips. And that's okay. We're basically gonna do that automatic quad remesh thing we did earlier, but we're gonna learn how to do it by hand this time to generate some good topology. Shift right click to place a 3D cursor somewhere near the lips. Hit shift A to add a plane and scale it down. Rotate it to try and get it about the same angle as the face that's already there. Uh, the most important modifier that we need when we're doing manual retopology is a shrink wrap modifier. Select the target as your mesh and raise the offset to something small like 0.001. Make sure to hit that on cage button again so we can more clearly see what we're doing. Another thing I very much recommend is clicking that snap button up near the top and change to face snapping. So our basic goal here is to take this plane we made and have it follow the edge of the lips and go all the way around. This is gonna create an edge loop that will help make some better definition on our model. Uh, I usually use an edge select and extrude, keeping quads as I move along. Uh, apply a mirror modifier with a mirror object and make sure to put clipping on for when we get to the front of our model. The shrink wrap modifier and face snapping are gonna do their best to guess where you want these new edges to hover over, but sometimes it's just not right. Um, go to Vertex Select and Edit Mode with 1 on the keyboard to play with the placement with a little bit more detail. This is something that could have been done at any time since we did the quad remesh. I just forgot to. Click on your head model, hit 1 on the numpad, Alt-Z to see through it, and box select the left half of the vertices and delete them. We're going to have to apply a mirror modifier and use the mirror object again here. If you get the same error I did of like having a line go down the center of your model, go to your merge limit and then change it to 0.002 or whatever makes it work for you to make that disappear and feel seamless again. So what are we even going to use these new lips for? If you said kissing, just do that on your own time, because these new lips are gonna have the edge loop that we want for our model. We need to select the old lips and any mouth information on our model and delete it. Yeah, delete it. Uh, the end goal here is to stitch together these lips with our original mesh, which is less creepy than it sounds, I promise. This part of retopology feels more like a relaxing pie cross puzzle to me. Uh, a small tip, uh, you can click the overlays dropdown under geometry and you can hit face orientation. Ideally, all the objects on the outside of your model should look blue and the inside should look red. I realized that the normals on my lips were inverted, so I selected the mesh, hit L to select everything attached to it, and then hit F3 to search for recalculate normals, and then I used that and it fixed it. With the old lips and any mouth information deleted, select your new lips and your head and hit Ctrl J in object mode to join them together, which will combine their mesh data. Now, I am not a retopology expert. <laughs> this is one of the steps I'm the worst at, to be quite honest. Your goal is to connect our two meshes together while keeping as many quads as you can. Selecting two edges, hitting F3 and searching bridge edge loops is a really quick way to connect topology together. So is selecting four different vertices in edit mode and hitting F to create a face between them. So go all around your new lips and stitch it together with your head. My long form video is there if you want to see someone who's kind of still learning the process stumble their way through it, but I recommend just looking up a retopology tutorial if you are struggling. 
Once you finish your goal, make sure the lips look good too. Feel free to do some modifications in sculpt mode or proportional editing to define the look of your character's mouth. Select your brand new shiny edge loop in edit mode and edge select with an alt click. Hit F3 and type mark seam. This will make it look red in edit mode too. Feel free to add some loop cuts around this new edge for some added definition on the lips. With that lip edge loop still selected, pivot the camera inside the head like a Metroid Prime cutscene to get a good view of the maw from the inside. Hit E to extrude an edge and X to lock the axis and pull the lips towards the center of the head. Again, this will not work without clipping selected on the mirror modifier. Cool, onto the eyes, we're almost done. Use your art to get a good guess of where you think the eye hole is going to be, and then in edit mode with face select, delete the faces and edges there. Mark another seam here as well. We are going to bully this hole in our head mesh to be the approximate shape of the outline of our eye. Feel free to make your hole bigger or play with the topology if you can't seem to get this shape into a good position. The elastic deform tool in sculpt mode is really, really good for forcing it into position though. So with the eye hole in a good position, edge select your eye hole, hit E to extrude and bring it into the head a little bit and then hit F to fill that face. If, like me, you're not very good with topology yet, you might need to play with your eye hole and fiddle a little bit to get it feeling more natural. To make an eyelid, select a few of the edges near the top of your eye's edge loop, hit E to extrude and Z to lock it on the Z axis and bring it down a little bit. I tend to merge the side vertices with the vertices sitting on the edge loop for the eye. Check your normals here like we did earlier to just see if you need to recalculate them. To be honest, the eye is something I struggle with, so feel free to play with this and find your own method that looks good. Last step, last step. So to add a pupil, shift right click to set the 3D cursor somewhere in the eye and add a cylinder. It's gonna be huge, rotate it appropriately and scale it down. Make sure it's nice and thin and also scale it inwards a little bit to get a nice oval shape. Finding the correct spot to rest in the eye can take a little bit of time. Uh, a small tip with rotation is to hit R twice and that can give you a little more freedom to change the angle with your mouse. Well, hey, look, we did it. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Uh, as with any still learning style tutorial, I'm sure there are better ways to do some of the things I did. Feel free to tell me in the comments and share that knowledge. Uh, if this was helpful, let me know. If you followed the tutorial and made a practice 3D model, please at Kellefsaw on Twitter. Uh, if you think videos like this are a good way to learn, then also let me know. I plan on learning how to make furry VR chat models and documenting that learning process, but this is pretty much everything I know already, so thanks for watching.